We have a very special day today. Um, we have a patient from, I believe she's from Minnesota, <laughs> but I'm blanking on it now, but she has a Tarloff cyst and severe genital pelvic dysesthesias where she has a lot of abnormal sensations in her perineum that affects a bunch of things, including she can't even wear tight jeans, she can't participate in sexual activities, um, and I believe she's also got weird urinary symptoms, and it's a cluster of neurologic problems due to subtle abnormalities in the lumbosacral spine. So we did a targeted injection of, a t of her S2 Tarlop cyst, which is not that big, it's not eroding to bone, but she noticed a marked improvement in her symptoms. We also did a targeted injection into an L5-S1 annular tear, but that provided absolutely no diagnostic response. So we're very confident that the S2 Tarlop cyst is contributing significantly to her symptoms. And she's tried everything. She's at her wit's end. She's in so much distress that uh, we're adding this case on as an urgent add-on. Uh, and hopefully we'll do a, a good job and she'll get a great result and she can get back to her life. Uh, wow, she's got good bone. All right, we're getting started. This is the 3D navigation system. We're going to do it under low dose so that uh, we minimize radiation. But this will give me a really good three-dimensional picture of what I'm dealing with. Allow me to make the incision really small and allow me to make sure that, I'm, that I get around all the little nooks and crannies and know precisely where I am in three-dimensional space. All right, here's the utility of navigation. I can precisely identify where I'm going to be. You, can, you can't see it on the floral, but I know that the location is right there. So this is where I'm going to make the incision. And I'm going to try to make it as small as possible. Uh, local anesthetic. It's going to have to be longer than that, probably. That's why Jen's laughing. <laughs> I, I have some size <laughs> issues. They say size doesn't matter, but in spine, yes, size does matter. But it's the opposite. We just want everything to be really small. And you can do that as long as you have the proper tools to work in a small corridor and you have a way of identifying precisely where you need to get to. If you don't have those things, then you need to make the incision way bigger than necessary so that you can make sure you see everything. I think I'm going to buzz that right there too. Look at that video. So here's a little, it's not open because I can just touch it and it'll deflate, but it's poking out, so when it does fill up with fluid, look, there is a cyst in situ forming. And if you just look underneath it, what keeps going is the rest of the nerves. So this is like perineurium that fills up like this. Very cool. Um, you know, by ripping them apart, and then closing the dural tube tight so that there's a back pressure. Okay, let's give it two seconds. So we're doing a Valsalva maneuver, seeing if things reinflate. Oh, that looks good. Okay, we can relax now. Believe it or not, this suture is the 6O. It's thinner than our hair. So even though it looks big down here, it is, when I pull it out of the uh, microscope, Sometimes we cannot find it. Oh, look at that. I got it closed up. It's looking really good. We're going to make sure it's watertight now. Can I have a Valsalva maneuver? Sure. Okay, it's still pulsating because I don't want to pinch off the nerve. Oh, it's Yep, and now we're doing a Valsalva maneuver, putting some intra-abdominal pressure. And if there was a leak, if this wasn't watertight, a bunch of clear liquid would come out of here. Okay, you can relax. Oh, I am totally happy. Sergi Flow. I have this. Pickups. All right, so now I'm going to put the patch over it. 
pen feel for the micro. That's too big still. Scissors. Alrighty, there's the nerve. It looks totally normal now, except the stitches. <laughs> micro pen feel for. I'm gonna put like a little jacket on this baby. Some people will put it all the way around like circumferentially. I get so nervous doing that because if there's scar contracture, and scar contracture can be massive, it could potentially cause stenosis of the nerve root it's all theoretical, but that's my philosophy anyway. Philosophy of the wrappers is that it's the most effective way to prevent a recurrence. I can see that too. So until somebody proves what's the better way, since I've not had a recurrence yet, I want to stick to the principles of do not pinch off and choke off a nerve. But that just seems like bad. How cool is that? I'm gonna do a three ply, which is how I fix my spinal fluid leaks. And when I do it like that, I don't even have the patient rest. I just tell them, get up and walk around, and we keep an eye on the wound. And it has yet to spring a leak. So this is a really durable construct. But see how it's dry like that? It has to be kind of dried up. So the next layer is a little bit bigger and broader. Guess how many layers I'm going to do? Three. Someday a computer navigation system is going to tell me exactly how big to make this and even cut it for me. No, that's not true. But I can dream, can't I? I can always dream. And feel for. This is the third layer. So that's like where the cap of the bone was. This is tis seal or fibrin uh, sealant. We call it fibrin glue. It's basically the purified materials that make a blood clot. And you probably think this incision and all this approach is massive, but look at that. <laughs> and that's still magnified. Ooh, and then now I'm going to just take this and close it to that. And you'll still have your cute little butt crease. And there'll be no dead space. And hopefully you're going to feel a million times better. So I'm hoping you're going to be happy too. All right, today's an awesome day because Michelle proved again how great she is. And she's gotten another belt. So everyone in my OR has a belt. So we all know where we stand. You don't even get a belt until we decide you're part of the inner circle. And then once we get that, you get a white belt and you slowly move your way up. Michelle is now, she was a purple belt. So the next belt after that is a blue belt, then a brown belt, then a black belt. So she's getting there. Yay. And she's gonna probably be a black belt very fast. So let's all say, where to go, Michelle, ready? ready? Wait, hold on, one, three. One, <laughs> two, three. Way to go, Michelle! Thank you. <laughs> yeah, definitely our, our new white belt. That means that you're officially part of our inner circle. And we're stuck with you. And no matter what, we're gonna, we have to deal with it. 
surgery is all done. We're putting the last minute touches on the wound. Relatively small incision, but most importantly, underneath I was able to preserve the fascial attachments um, and uh, control the bleeding and just handle all the tissues nice and gently. So I think this is going to heal up beautifully. So today we have a patient with genital pelvic dysesthesias due to this Tarloff cyst. Relatively small, but clearly not normal. We did a targeted perineural anesthetic block and she got markedly better. She also has a little annular tear at L5S1, which we blocked and she got no diagnostic response. So we're very confident based on the symptoms uh, the response to the diagnostic injections um, and the neurogenital testing preoperatively that this is probably a major contributor to her genital pelvic dysesthesias. So we'll do a facet cyst excision and imbrication uh, and we're all hoping for a great result.